Hey YouTubers, it's Carl again. Thanks for stopping by Realty Executives Tucson Elite's uh, channel here at Sell More Homes Now. We really appreciate all the support you've been giving us and the emails and the statements that have been coming to me uh, have really been very positive. So I do appreciate it. And so today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the fair trade concept. Basically, this is a concept that uh, Floyd Wickman and I learned uh, when I was in one of his courses, and it was called the fair trade concept. And basically what it is, people give when they get. And so basically what happens is what you're trying to do is find a way to go ahead and interact with the seller in a meaningful way. So in other words, you're prospecting, you're talking to the seller, or maybe you're at an open house and you're talking to any buyers and that you found out are actually homeowners, which is pretty common, about 60% of the time. So what we find here now is a conversation that we're having with a seller that we need to be able to convey to them a way we can meet, have an appointment, give them something of value in order to meet with them, okay? So basically, let's talk about these fair trade items that you can use, okay? So fair trade item, fair trade. Okay, so basically one of the first things you can do, and this is what most agents do, is they offer out a market analysis, okay? Now the thing about it is that you need to understand that whenever you start offering something out to someone, you have to ask yourself the question, so what, okay? So what? Why would this be important to a seller, okay? So when you're talking to someone, you say, okay, well, look, you say, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, hey, I appreciate you talking with me today on the phone, and I really am excited about, you know, coming out and talking to you, and I'll tell you what, why don't I do this? I don't mind. Why don't I stop by and take a look at your home, and while I'm there, I'll be happy to give you a market analysis. Now, in your head, this is the part where you say, so what, Okay. Because remember, people are not going to do anything unless you give them a benefit to them. And that way you can say, so that you know what your home is worth in today's market, okay? Now in a downward moving market, that may not be that important because they may not want to know. But that's why I'm gonna give you a lot of other tools as well. So the second one that you can use is called the saleability checklist, okay? Saleability checklist. Now, the saleability checklist is something that you would devise, okay? It's something very easy to make. And what you do is you write out the 10, 15 things that you think are really crucial for it to be sold on the multiple listing service. So for things, uh, things like, you know, obviously a sign in the yard, the correct pricing, um, uh, putting it in the multiple listing service, having a, a good or above average commission, uh, full term length of a listing, uh, including of a home warranty, offering seller concessions, all of these different things that you think would be crucial to having a home sell, create a list of what those items would be, and then simply say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, and while I'm over there, I'll be happy to give you what's called a saleability checklist. Are you familiar with it? Well, no. Oh, well, basically what it is, it's a tool that I use so that you know your home will sell when you put it on the market. Now that brings a lot of value to the buyer, or I'm sorry, the seller, because they have this, this list that they can use that will eliminate any kind of problem that they may have in terms of selling their home. How do you guarantee that their home will sell? Well, guys, a real simple way, price. Just make sure the price is right and everything else will fall into place, okay? Next, compare, I'm sorry, the uh, time financial analysis, okay? Time financial analysis. The time financial analysis, and basically what this is, is so that you can find out the financial ramifications, okay, of when is the best time to put the home on the market. So for example, they say, well, you know, we're planning on waiting till after the end of the year to put our home on the market, okay? Say, well, you know, I can appreciate that. And I'll tell you what, why don't I come out and take a look at your property? And while I'm there, I don't mind. Why don't I give you a time financial analysis of the situation? Remember, your head, so what? So that you know what are the financial ramifications of waiting till after the end of the year? 
because believe it or not, there are going to be several, okay? So, time financial analysis, in this particular circumstance, what you're gonna be talking about is the cost versus time. In a downward trending market, if the market is going down 1% per month, okay, and they wait three months to get their home sold, that equals on a $100,000 house, that costs them $3,000, okay? That's how that works. That time financial analysis is something that they're gonna to need to know because if they're gonna be making decisions about time, all right, and how long it's gonna to take to put their home on the market, they need to know what the ultimate cost of that time is. You can't get anything for free. You're gonna pay for that time. It's just a question of how much are you gonna pay for that time and is that something you're willing to pay? The next fair trade item that you can give them, okay? The next fair trade item you can give them is called a comparison flow chart. Comparison flow chart. The comparison flow chart is a chart that you develop, okay? It's very simple to make. All you do is simply go ahead and create a checklist, a, a list if you will, um, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You put down, say, Remax and Realty Executives and, uh, you know, I don't know, Tierra Antigua or somebody like that, some of the different companies. And then what you do is you go ahead and create a list like this, let's say, all right? You put in Long, Tierra Antigua, Realty Executives, right? And in here, you have a list of different services like MLS, you know, signs, you know, whatever it is that separates you, okay? And then you've seen these checklists before in varying formats, you know, like they'll have, they'll have MLS, they'll have, you know, MLS, and we'll have MLS, and they'll have signs and signs and signs. But, you know, we've got an 800 number system, let's say, that they don't have, or, you know, you find things that you have that they don't have. Now, it's important in case you haven't figured this part out, okay? Do not stress the things that your competitor does better than you, okay? The whole purpose of this chart is to make you look better than them. So take a couple minutes to find out what it is that they offer that you maybe don't or maybe that you offer that maybe they don't. Some of the things that you offer would be things like, um, let's say, for example, an action plan. If you have an action plan that's developed, then that's something that you want to write that down. Action plan. No, no, yes. Okay, make sense? Next. The next item, number five, of your fair trade items Okay, number five is your documentation checklist. Documentation checklist. Now, documentation checklist is, is very simple. Basically what it is, think about your day-to-day -day activity. What are some of the laws that you have to comply with, okay, in order to make a legal and safe transaction. So for example, here in Tucson, obviously you've got your lead-based paint disclosure, okay? You've got your area, uh, the uh, military aircraft vicinity, uh, airport vicinity uh, disclosures. Uh, you've got, uh, let's see here, any mold disclosures. That's another good one you could use. Obviously your seller property disclosure statement. Uh, you could use, of course, any kind of clue reports and things of that nature. So. Remember, these types of forms the sellers do not have. This would be a great thing to have for a for sale by owner, okay? So you say, well, Mr. For sale by owner, you know, I would love to come over and take a look at your house. And while I'm there, I'll be happy to give you what's called a documentation checklist. And, and basically, so what? Basically what that is, that's to make sure that you'll know, okay, that you're protected somewhat legally, okay? And the purpose of that somewhat legally is to help them understand that, look, by selling it yourself, you've got a whole host of things that you're open up to in terms of a legal sale. And these things, like it or not, it doesn't matter if you're a real estate agent or not. If your home was built prior to 1978, you're going to have to disclose this issue of lead-based paint. A lot of for sale by owners don't know that. And that's a federal thing. So that's stuff you want to let them know about. Next. 
Number six, estimate of net. Estimate of net. See, a lot of times what sellers are figuring is not necessarily the reality. When they start talking about closing costs, they really have very little idea of what closing costs generally are. We give a seller a lot of credit. We tend to think that they know right off the top of the bat that their closing costs are going to be around one and a quarter percent of their asking price. That's what uh, that's what they uh, of their sales price. That's what they they don't really know. They sort of figure it's maybe three four percent. Remember your commissions, okay? Whatever you charge them, six or seven percent or whatever it is you charge them, plus one and a quarter percent for their closing costs is a good rule of thumb for for figuring out their closing costs. It's not all inclusive but it's real close within a couple hundred bucks it's where you're gonna find yourself so the thing about it is that when you say well mr. mrs. seller why don't I do this I don't mind why don't I come over take a look at your property and while I'm there I'll be happy to give you a, a estimate of net so you know okay that about how much money you're gonna make when everything's said and done when the dust settles that's how much you're gonna have that's something of value to them okay next the area competition report area competition report okay or another way you could put that is area sales report area competition report or area sales report this is nothing more than a CMA remember everybody and their mama offers out a CMA hey why don't I come out and give you a CMA hey why don't I go ahead and give you market analysis hey why don't I go out you know look everybody does that you don't want to be everybody okay you want to be different and when you want to be different you want to say things like I want to give you an area competition report has anybody given you one of those yet well no what is that now you're probably sitting on the other end of this camera saying to yourself well Carl what's an area competition report how do I make one or an area sales report how do I make one it's simple just do a CMA okay an area competition report is just the other homes that are for sale within a one mile area that's all it is but remember you're a real estate professional and you didn't know five minutes ago what that meant okay they're the untrained public they will not know all right so if you're sitting there telling them hey guess what guys I've got an area area competition report that way you know how you're sitting amongst the competition I got an area sales report that way you know exactly what your neighbor sold for or or in this case if it's a foreclosure sold out for okay so that's stuff you'll want to know next <clears throat> tips on making your house more saleable look every time you've taken a listing okay I want you to think back every time you've ever taken a listing in your life or if you've never taken a listing in your life okay the one thing that every seller wants to know is what do I need to do to get my home sold what do I need to do to make it stand out with these other people they know that you've gone and seen homes over and over and over that's what you do okay they assume that you can sell a home before you you know before you come over until you start opening your mouth and talking they just assume you know how to sell okay so here you are you've got the the the, the chance to see them they're going to want to know what you know from other homes they've not seen other homes they don't know what the other world lives like and so they're going to want to know tips on what they need to do to go ahead and make their house more saleable so what you do is you say well look guys tell you what I'll be happy to come over and while I'm there I'll be happy to give you a pamphlet tips on making your home more saleable okay that way remember so what that way okay you'll know what you can do to make more money on the home when it sells all right that you can create on your own you can go online you can find a million places where you can just go on Google and type in you know home selling tips or something like that you know uh, easy fix-ups or something like that copy paste create a little pamphlet for yourself Realty Executives also has a pamphlet it's called uh, uh, preparing your home for sale you can go online and get that that's very simple to order uh, so all of these things you can certainly get now next methods of new financing
methods of new financing, okay? Your buyer, I'm sorry, your sellers do not know the latest and greatest when it comes to financing, okay? So when you're talking to them, you say, well, look, guys, hey, I'd love to come out and take a look at your property. And while I'm there, I'll be happy to go ahead and bring with me methods of some of the new financing that you can use. That way, when you get a buyer, okay, you won't take your home off the market prematurely, all right? You can help show them how they can get that person into a bond program or how they can go ahead and get the thousand dollar down program or how they can go ahead and make sure that the person is qualified you know how to read a pre-approval letter how to go through you know hard money you know something like that the purpose here is not to educate them okay they're not going to remember it it's going to swim past their head okay the whole purpose here is to get to them get in front of them so they can see your smiling face and see that you're a real person that you're not going to bite you're not going to kill them you're not going to be pouncing on them or anything like that you're giving them something of value and what's more important than that is the fact that they don't know everything okay it would be nice to know how they can finance that home for a thousand dollars down but they don't know how that program works well you mean we can sell this home for more money than we're asking right now Okay, so wait a minute, let me get this right. We're asking $300,000 for our home. And you're telling me that I can get $350,000 for this home if I'm willing to wait a little while to get my money? How does that work? That's where you want to be. Because you can do those sorts of things. You can show them tips and tricks on how to get more money for their home using various methods of financing, okay, which we've talked about in previous lessons. We talked about owner carrying, uh, owner financing, owner carrybacks, you know, all inclusive trust deeds, things like that. Those things will help you because they don't think about them. All right. When you, when I tell you as a for sale by owner, Hey, I understand you want $300,000, but if you're willing to wait a little bit for your money, we could probably get you 350. That's going to get your attention. Okay. And you won't have that ability to get that attention unless you have this, you know, this uh, fair trade item, the method of new financing. Okay. So get that ready. Next, uh, 10. Number 10 is the analysis of repairs. Analysis of repairs. The analysis of repairs report basically is this. It's saying, hey, look, why don't I come over, take a look at the home while you're doing the repairs you're talking about doing. And that way you'll get the most out of this home. I don't want you to spend a dollar and get out 50 cents. Okay. Why don't I come out, take a look at your property, take a look at some of these reports and give you an analysis of the repairs that you're doing so that you won't waste your money in areas that you won't get your money back. Or I don't want to see you put in a dime and only get a nickel out. Okay. Something along those lines. All right. People want to make sure that they get the most bang for their buck. And if they're doing repairs on their property before they put their home on the market, then don't let them do retarded repairs like putting in a lawn. Okay. Or, or fixing a, you know, fixing a tree house or some nonsense. Okay. Get them in the right spot. If they're going to do some repairs, have them do repairs in the right places. Okay. Next tips on advertising. Now I'm not a big fan of advertising and I think I made this pretty well known. I'm not a big fan of running big ads in papers and magazines and so on and so forth. You're competing with everybody else. I'm, it's, I've made no bones about it, okay? But if you choose to go ahead and run advertising in some kind, okay, at least be kind about it, okay, and give them tips on advertising. All right? What works? What doesn't work? Where do you want to have it? So, for example, if you've been in real estate for a while and you real estate, uh, you advertise in the real estate book, then you know, okay, for example, that it's better to be on the right page than it is the left page, okay? You know it's better to be on the top left, I'm sorry, the top right, than it is to be on the bottom right. You always want to have your name and your phone number on the bottom because people read from left to right, okay? All of these little tips and tricks and things you know. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to put their home in a home magazine, but the same trick goes for ad copy in the paper. How are they going to write the ad in the paper, okay? What's the tips that they can put in there? Is it important that they spend nine lines of copy to talk about their spa 
in their backyard. No, it's not. What is important? It is important to talk about the kind of financing that they could use on this property. That's going to get the phone to ring. Okay. You could talk to them about Google Voice to maintain privacy and things like that. There's a lot of different things you could teach them. So tips on advertising is something that you could use as a fair trade item as well. And last but not least, okay, and this one's really nice. Reasons why your home didn't sell. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'll tell you what, why, why don't I do this? Mr. and Mrs. Expired, why don't I come over and take a look at your property? And while I'm there, I'll be happy to go ahead and go over some of the reasons why it didn't sell. Again, so what? Well, the reason why is so that you know when you put your home on the market, you won't do the same mistake twice, okay? They're gonna say, well, it was the market, it was bad timing, it was this, it was that. Not necessarily so. It's not necessarily so. Because if your home was in, in a bad market, then why is it that 1,400 homes sold last month? Okay, it's not a bad time. It's a great time. It's just a matter of maybe your home wasn't exposed properly, or maybe there was something wrong on the listing. What I used to do, which really worked well for me, I took a copy of the listing, okay? I would take it over there with me from the last agent, and I would say, oh my goodness, looky here. You see where it says lot size? You know, it would say irregular or zero times zero or whatever. Oh my goodness, that is so important. You've got, you got to have that in there because people got to see what it is. I'd highlight that. I'd check the zoning, okay? If it was zoned R, let's say I remember one listing, for example, I had, that I took as an expired, it was actually zoned R2 and they had a 10,000 square foot lot, which means it was splittable, okay? The last agent had it down as a R1 was zero times zero. See, oh my goodness, that could have cost you the listing right there. That could have cost you a sale because you have a splittable lot. Oh my goodness, this right here, I would have done this or I would have done that. I'm sure the other agent did the best they could, okay? You don't downplace or downgrade the agent, but you just point out things that you might have done differently on that multiple listing sheet that will help them understand that there is a difference and the multiple listing service sheet is the greatest place single hands down place the great greatest ad you will ever have for a home and it has got to be right every time so anyway i hope this has been a value to you these 12 fair trade items if you use them in conjunction with your real estate business to try and set appointments with sellers i think you'll find that you'll be able to get in the door a lot easier you'll be able to have a way to communicate with them a lot faster and in a more meaningful way if you like what you saw today, then please feel free to go ahead and like, rate, and subscribe down at the bottom below. We do appreciate it. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at kcrinsel at, at uh, gmail.com. That's K-K-R-E-N as in November, T-Z-E-L at gmail.com. Or comment below with your question. I'll be happy to check it out and do what we can to get you an answer. Thanks a lot. Have a powerful selling day. Bye-bye.